This week's episode of Good Morning Cortland is brought to you by Funflix Indoor and Outdoor Movies. They bring the drive-in experience to you. Visit funflix.com to reserve your event today. Hey guys, it's time for this week's episode of Good Morning Cortland, where we recap the week's top stories. Cortland Common Council met Tuesday night and approved a preliminary plan submitted by a group of community stakeholders to transform the soon-to-be-closed Parker Elementary School in Cortland into a daycare center. Last year, a task force was formed after the Cortland City School District Board of Education voted to close both Parker and Virgil Elementary School. On Tuesday, the task force presented their plans to city officials. Cortland YWCA Executive Director Kelly Tobin said the plan addresses the need for child care in the community while also presenting an opportunity for jobs. The project is contingent upon securing several government grants, but Tobin says she's confident the task force can secure the funds needed for the project. Well, Saturday marked the last day of events for the Empire State Senior Games at SUNY Cortland. More than 1,000 people from across the U.S. ages 50 and above competed in sporting events throughout the week. This was a non-qualifying year, but next year, participants will be competing once again to qualify for the 2021 National Senior Games held in Florida. This year's National Games are being hosted in New Mexico. And for this week's Community Spotlight, I recently sat down with Cortland County District Attorney Patrick Perfetti. Last week, Perfetti announced his office's Police and Angel Assisted Recovery Initiative, which allows those suffering from addiction to turn themselves in to the City of Cortland Police Department in exchange for treatment. Perfetti says the program is open to anyone willing to embrace society. The crux of the agreement is that my office, where an individual who, who is addicted to alcohol or drugs is ready to get sober, approaches the uh, local police department, the city police department, and if they have any contraband on them or drug paraphernalia, they will turn that over and they will not be prosecuted for any criminal offenses that could arise from being in possession of such items. And then once they are assessed by local law enforcement and checked to make sure that there are no detainers or warrants for their arrest, then they uh, will contact an angel who is one of our community volunteers. We have started with half a dozen angels. Uh, I have to give credit to Cortland County legislator uh, Doug Bentley who uh, was one of the first to volunteer and he got us uh, five other very like-minded uh, concerned citizens to uh, join him. And uh, the angel will actually come into the police department and sit with the uh, prospective participant uh, well the uh, CODI, which is the uh, Center of Treatment Innovation, which is a uh, part of the uh, Family and Children's um, Services organization that's uh, operated here in Cortland. The CODI van will come, pick up the individual, do an initial assessment, and then transport them to the Helio Health uh, of Syracuse 24-hour uh, walk-in uh, treatment facility for further evaluation and follow-on treatment. The idea behind it is that it started in Gloucester, Massachusetts with a police chief there who was tired of constantly uh, arresting people for the same type of uh, addiction related offenses and wanted to break the cycle and do something about it. So. Uh, we've largely adopted uh, that model, which uh, many other communities have done successfully. Is it a funding involved, or is it more just an understanding? No, there's no funding involved. It's, it's merely an understanding uh, among these community partners who are uh, law enforcement from my office and the city police department. Uh, the mayor of the city uh, had to buy into this because the police um, force is under his executive authority. Um, we have partners with uh, Family and Children's Services, which is a, a private organization, as well as Helio Health in Syracuse, and it was a matter of coordinating our activities in agreement. Uh, the biggest obstacle, really, was getting the um, transportation worked out because Helio Health, which is a which is a great asset, and they are engage. They have grants, but they obtain their grants in independently. Their grants do cover 
uh, Cortland County and providing these services to people who come out of Cortland County. The difficulty was getting these people to them, which is a challenge that is not unique to this program. It, it affects many social service programs here in a county that's rural like Cortland. So um, the transportation piece and connecting, connecting these uh, participants to that service provider was the key. You can learn more about the program at our website, CortlandVoice.com. That does it for this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified when a new episode gets posted. You can head to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates on what's happening in Cortland. And as always, visit CortlandVoice.com for the latest top stories. We'll see you next week.